This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater. And I've seen The Snow Queen, a Soviet-era animated fantasy film from 1957, directed by Lev Atamanov. It follows Kai and Gerda, two close friends spending their childhood the way all kids should, having fun, cultivating flowers, and listening to stories of The Snow Queen, who is said to command cold weather, snow, and ice, with an equally cold heart devoid of any love. Unbeknownst to the two, the Snow Queen is not only real, but can see and hear as Kai mocks her, choosing to punish him by sending enchanted ice splinters into his heart and eyes, making him uncaring and reckless towards Gerda. The very next day, Gerda watches as Kai is whisked away by the Snow Queen herself, spurring her to travel through distant lands, meeting new friends, and facing many dangers, never once losing sight of her goal nor her love for Kai. It's a very cute and lighthearted story, despite some of the darknesses presented throughout. It's easily a major point that Gerda's positive outlook on the challenges ahead are her greatest asset in her search for Kai. It's not only a childhood innocence sort of thing that you'd find in a fairy tale like this, but it's also presented as something more infectious or touching for others, as Gerda's various acts of kindness and her otherwise radiant energy come to move others, leading them to help her on her way or even help themselves change for the better. It is admittedly a bit of a simplistic means of storytelling, with little depth to the characters and the plot which is more like a series of events strung together by a narrator figure which I forgot to mention earlier. Even the variation in the places being visited by Gerda lacks any real consistency, in that she might leave one place, enter another, and repeat those two steps several times over. Regardless, the whole story is set up as a fairy tale, so I'm not going to be too harsh on it since it's less about the characters and what they do, and more about what they learn and what you take away from it. To that end, the morals on display, and the general conflict between warm love and cold cruelty, are illustrated rather well, even if they're as plain as day and far from complex. Meanwhile, the film's art design is more literally illustrated, with a greater amount of detail and stylization. It's especially apparent whenever the Snow Queen is seen, with her slow movements, human-like figure, and the sharp, angular elements of her home and throne, a clear contrast to the softer, more traditionally cartoonish character designs found elsewhere throughout the film. Color choices are also a large part of the film's greater appearance, from the basic usage of warm colors shifting the blue tones as Gerda makes her way towards the Snow Queen, to individual settings which are able to play with lighting and shadows to give a scene a sense of real physical depth. Although the rest of the film's technical elements are a bit standard, it's not at all a stretch to say that its artistic look makes up for those flaws by the simple fact that they bring out the purer fantasy elements of the story. Overall, while the movie may have its fair share of issues, they're easy to forgive when the rest of the film is not only wholesome and cozy, but also willing to approach its subject matter in a very unique way. The Snow Queen, Lev Atamanov, 1957. Four stars. I definitely recommend giving it a watch. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. Also, there was some beeping in yesterday's review video. I think that might be this camera's low battery warning. So I uh, gotta go find some batteries? Honestly, I'm surprised I've lasted this long on the same pair of double A's. I mean, this is an old camera, but even then, 